Hey, what's up guys? Look here today with a video for you. This is a video that is going to be the third video uh, in the series Luke's Top 10 Free Mac Applications. And I'm doing this video uh, late July, early August uh, because a lot of kids are going to be heading off to uh, new schools, uh, maybe a new job or whatnot in the in the summer, or in the spring, pardon me, in September. Uh, so I wanted to do Luke's Top 10 Free Mac Applications version 3, kind of geared towards you just bought a Mac, you're heading off to something new, what applications are really cool to have um, and that tell you cool things about your Mac that allow you to use it and then you know just I've got some fun apps in there as well. So this is uh, Luke's top 10 free Mac applications as I said before version 3 because I've already done two more of these videos uh, you can check those out as well as all of the other apps that I've suggested so now at the end of this video I will have suggested 30 awesome free apps. Uh, for the Mac, the Macintosh computer. So we're gonna go through 10 applications here. Uh, these are really great applications. Um, the first one is, uh, we're gonna do battery health. Battery health is an interesting application, not really uh, for you if you've got, uh, no thanks, I don't wanna join the, uh, the mailing list. Not really helpful for you if you've got uh, an iMac or a Mac Pro or um, a Mac Mini. Uh, this is more so helpful if you have a MacBook Pro or a MacBook because what this does is it tells you the state of your battery. So current charge on my battery is 97.7%, okay? Uh, my battery health is 94.9%. So that's the health of your battery. So as you can see, I've had my laptop for 1.3 years and I've lost 5.1% of my battery. So that's the life of it and it's like just 5% of it is just gone. Um, which I thought was actually really good because I keep my laptop plugged into my Thunderbolt display all the time and people say that's supposed to fry your battery. Um, I've never really looked into it because you know, I just, that wasn't a really huge thing for me. Um, but I've had it for 1.3 years and I've only lost 5%. So I mean, that's I think that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good turnaround. And then it tells me how many cycles I've done. So uh, a, a typical MacBook battery or MacBook Pro battery is stress tested for a thousand cycles. And I've only done 124, so that's 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 not bad. That's not bad at all. So that's battery health, free in the App Store. And before I go any further, I should mention that all of these applications are available for free on my website using the link down in the description below. And then battery health is always just right up here in uh, in your bar. Okay, uh, the second one, kind of staying on the track of that, is uh, Black Magic Disk Speed Test. So here we've got the Black Magic Disk Speed Test, and this is kind of these are both applications for maintenance of your Mac. So the battery health and now this, and this will tell you the write and read speed for various files on your Mac. So it'll tell me how fast I can write like 1080p video files, uh, 720p video files. And it's just, it's interesting facts to know because what if your hard drive is failing um, and you kind of want to know where uh, your hard drive is reading and writing. So right now I am, let's see here, reading uh, 10 bit, HD 1080p video at 10, I think it's 10 megabits a second, right? That's what it was measured in, yeah, megabits a second. And I'm reading at, or sorry, I'm writing and reading at 11, which uh, is not bad at all. So, I mean, it's just something interesting to have uh, so that you'd be able to see what your hard drives are doing. You know, maybe you run it once when you first get your laptop and then once again in a month to see, you know, how much uh, how much crap you put your hard drive through. So, Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. The third application we're going to talk about is uh, one that's really cool, and they've kind of implemented this with the new uh, Mountain Lion, but I don't have that yet. And this is a free application. Uh, it's called Notes Tab, which is just it's just a tab right up here, and it's so easy because before what I have, used to do is I'd open up a text edit document, and then I'd always keep like a little scratch scratch text edit document open where I could like paste things and you know stuff that like links and things that I needed so that I just always had a text edit window open. Notes is perfect because I just keep all my stuff in here. Like here we've got my 10 free Mac. We're not going to show that yet because that'll spoil the video. But we've got some dimensions here, some uh, review products I'm hoping to get. But it's just an excellent application and it's got some features like uh, this feature, anchor feature. So if anchor feature isn't off, uh, I can click away and the notes thing, the notes uh, tab goes away. But if I have the anchor on, I can keep the notes open. Maybe I'm copying something down or whatnot. I think it's really awesome, um, and I like how they've integrated ads into it to make it free. Like this, these are the ads down here. It's nothing, right? So I mean, awesome app that's called Notes Tab. Um, all right, the fourth free application. This is kind of again geared more towards students uh, because we all know who really writes our uh, essays, and that is the Wiki app. And the Wiki app. I know you could just go to Wikipedia.com. Uh, but I find the wiki app, you know, it's fast, it's easy, it's, you know, you just type in, you, you want to know about iPhone, uh, you just hit the iPhone 4S, let's find out a little bit more about the iPhone 4S, and then the wiki page appears right here. 
because teachers say don't use Wikipedia but you know let's be honest we use Wikipedia okay so interesting little application again you can search the text you can do this all in Chrome or Firefox or whatnot too by just hitting command F but you can uh, maybe you want to search uh, Steve Steve Steve's in this article Steve Jobs right here whose health was deteriorating and died the day after the announcement that's really sad anyways so the wiki application um, next one really really cool application um, I'm definitely gonna be using this uh, this year a lot because I'm uh, paying for my internet bill now because I, I lived in residence last year so I was just incorporated with all my res fees but now I'm paying for my internet separately and I have to monitor my bandwidth to make sure I'm not going over so what this does is it monitors my bandwidth so let's open up Google Chrome here uh, let's just pop open YouTube okay and as you can see the counter is going up and it'll go up even more as I'm gonna toss on the video here and it'll show you how much uh, how much bandwidth you've used. And this, this application is called Bandwidth Plus. Again, uh, available for free download using the link in the description below. Oh, we've got to watch it. You probably had to watch an ad to see this video. Now you have to watch another ad in the video. Okay, well, let's crank it up to 1080p 1080p quality and see how fast this bandwidth shoots up. How much does a 1080p YouTube video take in bandwidth? Oh wow, it's going. It's like. Uh, you know, 2.3 megabits a second, I'd say. Megabytes a second, pardon me. Bits is data, bytes is internet. Anyways, or sorry, other way around? I, I don't know, I'm confusing that. Anyway, so I can, and it also shows you what's interesting. It'll show you how much you've done today. Um, I just reset this before I did this video, if that's what you're wondering, um, because I don't really monitor it at home. I monitored it at school, but it monitors each different network you're connected to. So if today I'm connected to Skynet Defense, which is the one in my room. Tomorrow I go downstairs and I'm connected to the, the, my family's home network. It'll monitor how much I, I spent on Skynet and it'll tell me how much I spent on DeMarco. Uh, it's a really handy application. I mean, how could you not like that? Just kind of hides in the toolbar up there. Um, and it's just a fantastic little application. So I highly recommend that. That's called Bandwidth Plus, one of my favorite applications. So that's numero five. Number six is an application that I am not going to open uh, because it contains a lot of personal information, uh, and that's called Mint. Now, Mint had an iPhone app a while ago, um, and I was using Mint's iPhone app, and then I switched, uh, or not sorry, with the iPhone app, I also used the web interface. Um, and what Mint is, it is, is it essentially like monitors all of your finances, so your bank accounts, your credit cards, your investments, your loan, like it's just an awesome app that is like just completely free you know no catches it's just absolutely awesome because it'll take like all of your you know your assets or your net income or your you know your net cash or uh, it'll take the credit card balance away from your debit um, balance so that you know exactly how much money you have and you're not just like you know I have a thousand dollars in my debit account but then you have like you know a five thousand dollar debit or a visa bill so that's very good and it works with all the major brands like Bank of America BMO TD uh, Visa, I can assume it would work with, uh, you know, MasterCard. You've got all those great, great uh, companies. And I'm not going to open it, but again, check it out. Mint is, uh, it's called Mint, Mint Quick View, I believe it's called in the App Store. Um, and it's also called the Mint iPhone app. And I think there's an iPad app now. I know there's a web interface for sure, and it's really, really good. If you don't check out any other app from that video, Mint is the one you should check out. It's awesome. Uh, the next one, I've actually done a video on, so I'm not going to open it. Uh, I'll link to the video right here. Um, and that's uh, on CCleaner, which is uh, something to kind of speed up your Mac, erase files and junk that you didn't know that you had. Um, and it's, you know, it's a great little app to kind of just clean out the hard drives. If you find that your Mac hard drive is running slow or sluggish or your computer is kind of just bogging down, uh, run CCleaner. It'll delete like all your cookies, all your hidden files, all your, uh, you know, your unnecessary files that you would never, you know, average Joe would never even look at, never even know existed. CCleaner will get rid of them. Um, the next application is the app that I've been using to open all these apps, and that is this guy right here, which is Alfred, uh, which is just an awesome little hotkey application. So I can hit Option Space really quick, um, and it will just pull up anything. So if I wanted to pull up, let's say, um, what's an application here? Uh, if I wanted to pull up uh, Dictionary, okay, we're going to pull up Dictionary. Boom, just like that. It's open. If I want to Google something, I hit Option That, and maybe I want to Google uh, 2012 Olympic standings okay boom it's open in Google metal count up done right so Alfred's just a really really great little fun little application um, really fast to use you can customize it just kind of sits up in the dock up here so you can customize it uh, for what you want it to search so I have it searching my preferences contacts bookmarks uh, text files documents and 
folders. I don't have it going through images or archives. It's just a kind of just a waste of time, I think. Um, you can change the appearance of, appearance of it. So lion light, you know, you got all these. It's fantastic options. Hide the hat. I don't. I just have it. You know, what are you gonna do? Um, and then you can also change the hotkey. So right now I just have it as option or alt space, if you will. Alfred, ladies and gentlemen, great little application. Um, the next app, the ninth application, by the way, these apps are in no order whatsoever, uh, is something that will kill a lot of time. And I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna open Screen Snake. Oh, no, it's right there, okay. So Screen Snake. Um, and as you can see, this snake has just kind of started to go off my screen, and it is the biggest time killer. And this is more for university kids who are in class, and they're just looking to kill time. And what, essentially what the game is, is you have to hit that, there's one little square that you have to hit, and then you have to find it on your screen. So now it's down here, and it is so addicting. And it gets harder because every time you hit one of the bricks, the snake gets longer. So here we go. And it's just a fun little application to kill time with. And it's cool because you can play this game. You can't really, I mean, the only way you can really die is if you hit yourself. Like, what? Can I do it? Yeah, see? I just died. If you hit your tail end, you die. So I can't do it yet. I'm not long enough. But. You know, it's an interesting, it's a great application that you can kind of pay attention in class, uh, but you can let your mind wander with this application because it's hard to die if you're just kind of not touching the keys. So you can still pay attention. Great little time killer in class. Screen snake. And then if you want to quit it, you just go down here and you hit quit. I've had a screen snake, like I've one that was huge before, like almost my entire display. But what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? Number 10 in my final application uh, for this video is going to be uh, uTorrent. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, like Luke, a little illegal downloading, but no, uTorrent can be used for a lot of things that you know aren't illegal downloading, like uh, sharing softwares, uh, P2P servers, um, and stuff like that. And yeah, sure, people use uTorrent to download illegally movies and stuff like that, but uTorrent is actually really handy for downloading um, pretty much everything, like files, plans. Uh, you can have your friends, like if you, you know how your friends make uh, torrents and stuff like that. But uh, uTorrent is the next app, and I think it's fantastic. It's fast, it's easy, it's free, and I like it. I like uh, I like uTorrent a lot. So those are my top 10 free Mac applications. Version 3 if you're going back to school. So we got battery health is number one. Or these aren't in any order, but this is just kind of. Number one is battery health. Number two is uh, Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Number three is the Notes app, which is really, really handy. Number four is the Wikipedia app, because let's be honest, who writes your essays? Wikipedia does. Maybe that's just me. Should I, I should, probably shouldn't be saying that on the internet. Anyway, Bandwidth Plus uh, is an awesome little application for monitoring your bandwidth. Um, you know, so you can monitor, you don't go over in the month, uh, and you don't have to pay a ridiculous amount of uh, the fees on your next internet or phone or cable bill, whatnot. Sixth app, I just dropped the sheet of paper. Sixth app is Mint, which is your financial advisor from now on. Fire your accountant, fire your bookie, fire whoever manages your money because all you need is Mint. Seventh application is CCleaner, which is a great little application. Again, uh, I'll link to the video uh, on this video and then down in the description below. Really cool app to kind of speed up your Mac uh, and get things going to speed again. Delete files you don't need and also free up space that you didn't know you had. Uh, number eight is Alfred, uh, which is an awesome kind of, I ta I've talked about Quicksilver before and Quicksilver ain't got nothing on Alfred. Like just option space, Alfred's up. And it's really lightweight and it can always run in the background. So it's, it's really, really good. Uh, and then Screen Snake, you know, for killing time, which is uh, also phenomenal. So that's a free application as well. And then uTorrent, which is I use to download pretty much all of my uh, document files from university and stuff like that. Maybe it's just Ryerson or that's where I go uh, that uses um, uh, path files a lot to for I mean because the program I'm in I'm downloading a lot of. Uh, their video content so they'll be like here's you know a whole bunch of clips edit them um, and then I can get them through that uh, by accessing their Ryerson server but you know it's handy for uh, all sorts of things and that's why I recommend it anyways those are my top 10 free Mac applications if you have any top 10 free Mac applications just comment down below with those uh, inquiries and I would be uh, glad to maybe feature you in the next video Luke's top 10 free Mac applications version 4 and I would love to get it out uh, in less than a year so I'd love to maybe do two or three of these uh, series videos in a year because that's uh, that's what I like doing. I like to continue these series. So what's in my doc, Luke's top 10 free Mac, Mac applications and more. Anyways, that's it for me today. I hope you guys uh, have a great day. Uh, good luck with whatever you're using these applications for. Congratulations on the new or 
congratulations on the old uh, Mac, whatever, uh, if you're a new user or a continuing Mac user. And that's, uh, that's my spiel for the day. Be sure to visit LukeDemarco.com for all of these apps, and I will also post a link to them down in the description below. Have a great day.